Hey guys, thanks for joining me for another episode of Learn to Play Games. My name is Lance, and today we're going to take a look at Epic Roll. This is a game that was put out by Summon Entertainment. It is a 2-3 to three player game that takes roughly 15-20 to 20 minutes to play. It is a competitive game, so each one of the players is working against the other ones to be the first player to defeat the leech and to be the overall winner of the game. So the backstory on this game is that you are each playing an adventurer that has been summoned by the king of a kingdom that is being tormented by the undead and various other monsters being summoned and pushed towards that kingdom by the overall lynch, which is the big bad guy in this game. So the king is, is given you guys a quest to be the first adventurer to bring him back the lynch's head. And in order to do this, you're going to race against the other adventurers, slaying monsters, and pushing your luck to get to the checkpoints, and then finally making it to the lynch first. So depending upon whether you're playing the basic or advanced version, which this game comes with both, it will give you some abilities that you can use to impede or stop the other adventurers before they are able to make it to the lich and defeat him before you can. So, like I've said, each, each uh, adventurer is working independently and trying to defeat the other adventurers by gaining, uh, getting to the lynch first. So my impressions of this game are that I enjoy it. It is a small box quick game. It is fun. It's a nice filler game that you can just throw down as you're in between games or whatever. It, it uh, does have a small player count, and that's probably the only drawback is that if you're uh, playing with a group of guys uh, that's larger than three, you're going to be leaving people out. But it is fast enough where even if they do sit out or they take a break and do something, you can get a quick game in. Other than that, I do like the fact that uh, it's a dice chucking game with some strategy in it. Um, being Basically pushing your luck uh, to see if you can defeat more monsters than your other players uh, with balancing that with the risk of, well, if I push my luck too far and I take some damage by having some bad dice rolls, I'm going to die and have to go back to the beginning or the midpoint if you've made it that far. So let's head to the table and I'll teach you how to play. All right, so let's take a quick look at the breakdown of the dice. So at the bottom here, we have the three dice for the warrior, the ranger, and the mage. Each one will have their own. And each one of those dice has the different symbols on them, ranging from swords to shields and even multiple sword hits. From here, then we have the hero's power dice. When they reach their halfway mark, then they'll get to roll their power dice and including their regular dice. We have the final boss's power dice as well. And the basic monster dice, the, their attack dice, and to determine what basic monster you'll fight, which is the mummy, skeleton, or ghoul. And then we have the advanced monster's attack dice, as well as the advanced monsters, which are the zombie, the Ghost, and the Banshee. Another feature of the Advanced Mode is that each player will have their own player card. On the player card, it's going to show some different details. So first, it'll have the effect of the Power Dice when you roll the star, which is the same as the regular mode. Then it's going to have a passive ability. So for our wizard here, he can increase his maximum hand size by one. So during the Advanced Mode, he can have up to four cards in his hands. And then there's an active ability which you would have to tap and turn the card in order to use. And with the wizard, when he does that, he can target another hero and roll the power dice. If he rolls a power result, deal one damage to the opposing hero. So with that, he would only be able to use it against one of the other two heroes that is in the game. And like the, the description says, when he uses it, then he would tap his card and at the beginning of his next turn is when he gets to untap that card. Here we have the four different types of cards you'll find in the treasure deck. First we have the sword and shield, which are just like their symbols on the dice. The sword will grant you one hit against a monster, and the shield will block one attack from a monster. After that, then you have the healing card, which will heal you one point of damage up to your maximum health. You can use this even when you've taken your final wounds which will bring you back up to one health. And then last we have the counter card which will be used during opponent's turns and will cancel one of the cards that they play. Now with these first three cards you can play them anytime during your turn and the one other thing to keep in mind is that each player is allowed to only have a maximum of two cards at any point in time during their 
in their hands. If they get more, then they will choose a card to discard to get them back to their hand size. Board setup is real straightforward. You place the board out on the center of the table, and then you can place the three player markers on their represented pictures. You will also place the wounds counter and the monster counter, and then each player will receive their player dice. You can set the power dice off to the side as we won't use them right away, as well as the advanced monster dice and their attack dice. And you can go ahead and place the regular monster dice out for right now, and then the treasure deck. At this point, we're ready to start the game. So each round, each player will get a chance to perform their turn. During their turn, the players are going to advance their token by fighting different monsters and trying to reach the end boss, which is the leech, and defeating him. The first player that does this will be the winner of the game. The player that will start each round will be the player that is controlling the mage, followed by the player that has the warrior, and ending the round with the player that has the ranger. So each player, will, when it's their turn, will move their token one space forward to the first space on the battle track that is in front of them. From there, then they will roll the monster dice to see which monster they are facing. So our mage is going to fight a mummy, so he will put the wound token on the mummy space, and then he will move his wound token up to the number six spot. From here, then he will go ahead and grab the monster dice and his dice and roll them at the same time. He will resolve any effects on those dice, so nobody hit anything this time. And he will continue rolling those dice until either the monster is defeated or the warrior or or his character is defeated. All right, so the monster does one damage to the wizard, and the wizard will finish the monster off with two hits. Now, in order to defeat, to defeat a monster, the hero must have at least one wound remaining. Once they defeat the monster, they will get one treasure card that is added to their hand. And from there, then they will have a couple of choices. They can either push their luck and move up the track again and fight another monster, or they can choose to stop where they're at and end their turn. If they decide to push their luck, they will not regain any of their health. They must fight with the health that they have. So if our mage pushed his luck, he would start the next battle with five health. If he ends his turn here, when he starts his next turn, he would regain and move back up to his starting health of six. Now, the other thing to keep in mind is if you push your luck and you fail and are killed, then you would move your token all the way back to its starting space and you would lose any treasure cards that you have. The one exception to this is once the heroes have defeated three monsters, they will get a free move onto the, their upgrade space. From this point, they would roll the upgrade dice, as, and then they would move and, and add the advanced monster dice as well. From here, when they move up, if they happen to die on one of these three battle spaces, then they would move back to the flag space and not back to their starting position. Once they reach the final space, they can either stop their turn to regain their health or push their luck and fight the final boss, which is the Lich. The player that defeats, defeats the Lich first will be the overall winner of the game. So at this point, we're going to go ahead and say that the Ranger has successfully fought three battles and he's made it to his first flag. And he's going to go ahead and proceed to the next battle. So at this point, he would change out the regular monster dice for the advanced monster dice and he would gain his power dice as well. And as normal, he would roll on the chart to see which monster he faces. So we have a ghost. And he's going to go ahead and roll his dice. Now the one difference with that is the power dice, in which will grant a special ability for each hero. So for the wizard, it will grant one block. For the warrior, it will heal one life. And for the elf, it'll do one additional damage when you roll the star. Now there are plenty of blanks on the dice as well. So let's go ahead and fight the ghost. So the ghost does two hits and our archer does one. The archer does an additional. 
Archer stops the ghost's hit. And again, he blocks. They trade blows. They stop their hits there, but he does one additional from the star. And this time he does two, which will be enough to kill the ghost. So he will claim his treasure card. And again, he'll have the choice to end his turn on that space or push his luck. Now, the one other thing that I like to cover with battles is retreating. So during a hero's turn, when they're fighting a monster, they can also choose to attempt to retreat from that monster. They will roll the monster dice one final time and resolve the effects. If they are still alive after the effects are resolved, then they would simply move their token back one space and end their turn. So for example, let's go ahead and say that the mage pushes his luck and goes and fights another battle. So again, he would roll the dice and this time he rolls a ghoul. So he will not regain his health and then he would go ahead and proceed to that combat. If the combat is looking like it's going to go bad, then he can choose to try to retreat. So let's go ahead and say that we're going to go ahead and do that. So he would roll the monster dice one final time and it would roll a blank. Otherwise, he would resolve any hits that are done to him and then he would move his counter back one space and end his turn. All right, so now the last thing we need to look at is fighting the Lich. So our mage up here has defeated his three enemies and is ready to move into the boss fight. So he will move his token over to the boss. His health will go to six, and our Lich will get his full health. The Lich also gets his power dice, which when he rolls the star on his dice will heal him one wound up to his maximum. The wizard will get his power dice, which again, like I said, when he rolls a star, he will block one damage that the Lich does. And we'll go ahead and start our rolls. So he's blocked one, the Lich is one hit, and he has done two, but the Lich heals one. The mage is going to go ahead and use his treasure die, or card to heal one wound. And he is going to go ahead and try to run away because this battle does not look like it's going well for him. So the Lich will get his final dice and does two damage, which is enough to kill the wizard. So the wizard has died and will move back to the, his starting flag space. Now there is a veteran mode which will add some additional rules to the game once you've gotten the basic rules down. So the first thing is that player's hand size is increased to three cards, and there are other abilities or effects that can increase it beyond that. Another thing is when you're slaying a skeleton or a banshee, then you can get to draw two treasure cards as they are the hardest monsters of their dice sets. Another feature of the advanced mode is that each player will have their own player card. On the player card, it's gonna show some different details. So first it'll have the effect of the power dice when you roll the star, which is the same as the regular mode. Then it's gonna have a passive ability. So for our wizard here, he can increase his maximum hand size by one. So during the advanced mode, he can have up to four cards in his hand. And then there's an active ability which you would have to tap and turn the card in order to use. And with the wizard, when he does that, he can target another hero and roll the power dice. If he rolls a power result, deal one damage to the opposing hero. So with that, he would only be able to use it against one of the other two heroes that is in the game. And like the, the description says, when he uses it, then he would tap his card. And at the beginning of his next turn is when he gets to untap that card. The last new feature of Veteran Mode is the way the treasure cards work. Now they work as regular when you just play one of them. But now you can play a pair of them and get a bonus ability. So if you play two swords, you're going to do three damage. If you play two health, you will receive three life back. If you play two shields, then you're going to prevent all damage and reflect it back on the monster that hit you. And if you play two counters, you're going to counter one treasure card as normal, but you're also going to be able to add that card to your hand instead of the player discarding it. And it, all, the other thing to mention is if a player plays, a, plays one counter card on you, then you would remove just one 
of the cards you played and still receive the benefit of the other card. So if you played two swords, instead of receiving three damage onto the monster, if somebody counters you, then you would just do one damage to the monster as normal. 